the mandatory metadata retention regime applies only to the most serious crime, to terrorism, to international and transnational organised crime, to pedophilia, where it's been, um, where the use of metadata has been particularly uh, useful as an investigative tool, only to crime and only to the highest levels of crime. Um, breach of copyright is a civil wrong. Civil wrongs have got nothing to do with this scheme. I'll just, uh, I just, I see that Neil uh, Gagan's nodding there. Um, just very briefly, uh, no use of metadata to get people uh, taking uh, stuff illegally off the internet, is that right? That's correct. Unless it's pornography, presumably. Well, child exploitation material is a crime, Tony, and you know, the metadata is crucial to the investigation of that particular offence, as it is for terrorism. Can I give okay. you an example of why this is you so can, important? You can, but we're fast running out of time. We've got one more question we want to get to, so can, be, can you be brief? Um, recently, Europol, the European International Police Agency, conducted a major child exploitation investigation. In the United Kingdom, where there are metadata retention laws, there were 371 suspects, 240 were identified by metadata, and there were 121 successful prosecutions. In Germany, in the same investigation, there were 377 suspects. Because there was no access, capacity to access metadata, there were only seven of the 377 identified, and there were no successful prosecutions. There is a world of difference between the capacity of the police to crack down, not just on terrorism, but on evil things like pedophilia and child exploitation networks through the use of metadata, of which that is a recent practical example. Okay.